All right, I'm going to ferment the peppers from the garden, at least the hot peppers, the chilies, the Thai chilies, that is, and the jalapenos. And I'm going to do that in this jar. It's like a uh, quart jar, I think. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. And I'm going to cut the peppers up, put them in the jar uh, with this brine. This is a 3% solution of salt and water. Our water here has like yeast in it, we know. Um, so I'm boiling it first just to make sure it's sterile, even though it's already got the salt in there. And then I'm going to put it in this uh, sink full of cold water to kind of force it to cool down. I don't want to put the hot brine on the uh, peppers. Okay, we'll check back in a minute here when I work on cutting up the peppers and cutting a hole in the lid of the jar for the airlock. So here is the collection of peppers that we're going to ferment. We've got some homegrown jalapenos and some nice red ripe Thai chilies and then some less ripe green Thai chilies. We're going to cut all this up and put them in a nice clean jar. All right, we've got our peppers all cut up. We've got the brine poured on. We've got the jar sealed and we've got the airlock in place. And we're going to let this baby ferment for at least a month. Not sure how long it'll go, um, but we'll check in in a couple of days to see if it starts bubbling. Okay, here are those peppers that I started fermenting. It's been about uh, five or six days. You do see some bubbles at the top. It's not as even on top as I'd like it. Um, yeah, there's some bubbles. So it's, uh, it's coming along. It's really changed color. It's gotten kind of cloudy, but everything looks okay to me. Here's our hot pepper ferment. After about two weeks, you can see some bubbles trapped in there. If you agitate it, you can kind of get some more to come out. They kind of get trapped among the peppers. But it's definitely bubbling. And uh, I don't really see any concerning things, like any black growth on the top. It looks pretty healthy to me. Um, we're not really going to know until it's finished, but... So far it looks good. The color of the peppers is kind of changing, which is a good sign that there's acid developing because colors change or pigments change under uh, different acid and base conditions. And there's like a little bit of sediment collecting at the bottom, which I, I think is normal. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, about, like I said, it's been about two weeks. The pepper ferment is looking pretty good. The controlled rotting, aka fermenting, of my peppers has been going for six weeks. It's time to open this baby and uh, see what happened. Apollo! Hey, buddy. Apollo is going to help us uh, finish the hot sauce that we've been fermenting for just under six weeks. And I have my assistant, Vanna. I'm going to take the lid off here and get rid of the airlock and the lid. I have to pop that lid off. There you go. And just get that out of the way. And then we're going to strain the brine off. And you can see the color has changed from when these were fresh. Obviously, like the green was much greener. And at this point, we want to smell it because we are not looking for any weird, nasty smells. Um, it should smell like peppers. And it does. It smells very, very nice, actually. Vanna, what do you think? Vanna's not going to speak, I guess. Okay. And we're going to put that into the blend dish. Might need to do that by hand. Would you like my help? You can do it. Ooh, sorry about that. Yeah, whatever. Okay. And now... Just try to puree this stuff. Shake it a little 
Alright, we'll check back in in a minute. This usually takes a lot of shaking, so I'll update you once we get this going. So uh, we added a little bit of the brine back uh, to the peppers to get it to blend, and we got a nice puree. And now we're going to pour this into this strainer, like a wire mesh strainer, over a bowl. Ooh, it likes to stick in the bottom. Okay, that's good enough for now. And then we'll just push this through the strainer to get the solids out and to save our hot sauce. And we will check back in when I'm done with that. All right, I've spent about five minutes trying to press this stuff through the sieve. It's dried up a lot. A pepper mash. So we'll discard that. And then we're left with this, which is our hot sauce. So here is the hot sauce. It's kind of a yellow color, um, which is because we didn't really plan to make hot sauce out of these peppers. Um, they're just what we got from the garden. It wasn't a great harvest this year. Uh, so some of the peppers were green and some were red, so you end up with this yellowish color. Um, Stephanie, do you mind uh, giving me a chip? Sorry, our videos are not scripted, as hopefully you can tell, or maybe you're very credulous, which would be fine with me. Okay, just dip that in. I know that you know, hearing people eat on video is kind of gross, but bear with me. Well, the chip's good. Um, these are from High V, by the way. Okay, turn the chips. I'm not double dipping. Give me a break. Okay, so it, it's pretty hot. It's hotter than like a Tabasco or um, like a lot of your most popular grocery store hot sauces. It's very, very peppery. And in fact, the green pepper comes through really strongly. Um, I actually really like the flavor. Um, I'll, I'll test the pH of this tomorrow at work to see if it's um, shelf staple. But I'm really happy with how this turned out.